Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I want to talk about something that's really important. The idea that Satan wants you to lose. Now, whether you believe Satan is a, a literal being or a metaphor for negativity or self-doubt, the message is the same. You know, the Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy you. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Praise God. I'm come that they might have life and have life more abundantly. You know, there are forces out there that want to see you fail. But guess what? They won't win against you. You know, these forces of negativity, doubt, fear, uh, they want to keep you from realizing your true potential. They whisper lies in your ear telling you that you're not good enough. Uh, you will never make it. Uh, your dreams will never come true. Uh, don't you believe it? You know, you're stronger than the negativity that comes your way. Amen. You know, remember, every time you push through uh, a challenge, you grow stronger. Amen. Amen. Every time you refuse to give in to fear, you gain resiliency. Um, or you become more resilient. That was an awkward way to put that. Uh, every time you choose to believe, you take another step in the right direction. Yes. You take a step towards your dreams. Praise God. You know, everybody wants to win. But you only win when you do it God's way. Amen. Yes. This will give you a comprehensive look at winning God's way. <clears throat> Let's dive right into it, okay? Um, I, I, have been, I have been captioned this. You have an enemy. You know, I hate to bring that up, you know, because I'm going to teach a series on, on winning God's way. But at the beginning, I have to let you know that you have an enemy. Yes, amen. A lot of people don't know they have an enemy. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and give a quick testimony. You know, when I first learned about winning from the Bible because you know I, I came up in a religious church and in religious churches they don't teach about winning you know they, they, they teach you religion and when I first saw um, what was it 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 it said in a race, everybody runs, but not everybody wins. And um, God wants me to win. So if God wants me to win, it's a sin not to win. Amen. Yes. The Bible told me to run to win. You know, but you have an enemy. Satan wants you to lose. That's important that I tell you that. The Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. In other words, the devil doesn't come unless he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy you. Yes, and Jesus makes a distinction. He says, but me, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in this verse, Jesus is making a difference between 
his purpose or his reason for coming mm -hmm. and the enemy's purpose and his reason for coming. Yes. Now, let's get it clear. The purpose of the devil or the enemy when he comes is to steal, to kill, and it's all bad. It's all bad. There is no upside to his coming. But Jesus says, now don't confuse me with him. I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So you have to get real clear on that. <clears throat> Otherwise, you'll have a love-hate relationship going on with God because you, you'll think God is for you sometimes and sometimes he's against you. Now, <clears throat> God is always for you. It's just that in life, he has put in place, um, I don't know, maybe some safeguards that if you don't do things right, um, there are consequences. But God is still for you. Amen. Even the consequences are good. Yes, so make a clear distinction between God's purpose and Satan's purpose. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. But Jesus came so that you could win. And the purpose of Satan is to hinder you. The purpose of Satan is to hinder you. Yes. Now God wants you to win and I can prove it. I'm going to use one verse, just one. 1 Corinthians 9.24 uh, in the contemporary English version. You know that many runners in a race and only one of them wins the prize. So run to win. It's plain this day. God is never against you winning his way. If you run his way, you always win in the end. The reason why I say that is because you don't really know if you won until the end. You don't really know. It's too soon to tell. You could seem like you're losing right now, but a year from now, you could be clearly winning. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. Look at what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. He said, we would have come to you. Watch this. But Satan hindered us. You mean Satan hindered the great apostle Paul and his team? Yes, we would have come unto you, but Satan hindered us, yes. all of us. Amen. That means sometimes he might try to hinder you and I too. Yes, sir. You know, Satan has many ways of hindering us. But what does it mean to be hindered? That word hindered is an interesting word. I want to try to explain. To hinder in the Greek means to cut into, to impede, to detain, to hinder, to be tedious unto. Now that's very important, to be tedious unto. That word tedious is a very, very interesting word. To be tedious means to make it boring. It means to make you tired of it. It means 
to mentally exhaust you. And see, that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to make everything tiresome and boring and everything that's good. Everything that you really need to do, he tries to make it tiresome and boring and unexciting and so he can drain you mentally. You know, that's why we need patience and diligence. Amen. You won't get tired in Jesus' name. See, Satan's trying to make you give up. He's trying to make you quit. That's why Jesus said, if a man compel you to go one mile with him, go with him too. I'm not about to give up. Praise God. Amen. You know, you got to refuse to get tired. Now, that doesn't mean like your body. You know, if your body gets tired, you, you need to rest. Rest is very important. Rest is very important. That's all I'm going to say about that. But if your body's tired, rest. Mm -hmm. No, this is a mental thing. Mm -hmm. See, when your body's tired, you just need rest. But when you get tired mentally, you quit. Then you give up. Yes. Refuse to get tired when you're in pursuit of something. Amen. If your body's tired, rest. But don't allow yourself to get tired in your mind. Amen. Amen. Just say, my body needs some rest, so I'm going to rest. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Don't get tired when you're doing good. Don't allow yourself to tire. Here's the key. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 3 says, For consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. See, you have to think about Jesus and how he suffered and when he went through and how he was mentally strong. Yes, sir. Sometimes we're too mentally weak. Yes, sir. Amen. I ain't hear nothing. Amen. You got to be mentally tough. That's why it doesn't matter. That's why you, you see good looking people, young people, you know, people that supposedly have it going on, losing because they're mentally weak. Amen. Then you see regular people like me winning Amen. because we're mentally strong. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, Joshua 1 and 9 says, have, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Amen. Now, you can take that how you want. That's a command. Be strong and of a good courage. In one place it says, be strong and very courageous. Not even a little bit. Very courageous. Amen. <clears throat> but here's what I like. It says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Mm -hmm. Ah. See, now that word dismayed, that's an interesting word. I'll come back to it. And the reason why you shouldn't be afraid or dismayed is because the Lord God is with you wherever you are, wherever you go. Amen. Yes, sir. And if God is with you, let's face it, things can't get too out of hand. Amen. Yes, Amen. So quit belly aching, quit crying, quit... Uh, Complaining and grumbling. The Lord is with you. And if God is with you, things can't get too out of hand. Amen. You know, Satan will try to hinder you, but you have to fight back. Amen. You have to be rebuking him and, 
and working with patience and faith. Praise God. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to tire you out. <sighs> Hebrews 6 and 12. Don't be slowful. Don't be slowful. Don't be lazy. Don't do things too slowly. Don't be slowful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That's, that's, that's a scripture. Don't be slowful, but be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, winning is not possible if we fail to recognize the hindering of Satan. Yes. You got to say, oh, I know what this is. This is Satan trying to hinder me. Yes. But I won't let him. Amen. You have to put your, your faith and your patience out there so you can win. Put your faith and your patience out there so that you can win. Yes. I don't know if you noticed it, but it seems like a major weapon of Satan is fear. Yeah, a major weapon in the enemy's arsenal is fear. That's why the Bible says, have, have not I commanded you? Be strong and have a good courage. Be not afraid. You know, that's why I wear this little thing around my neck. It's not expensive. It's cheap, actually. But it says, fear not. It says, fear not. Because I ain't about that fear. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, <clears throat> but it says, neither be dismayed. And that, that word just kind of threw me off a little bit. Because I always thought I knew what it meant. But then I looked it up in the Greek. The word dismayed is an interesting word. It means to be broken down and lying prostrate. It means that you're, you're laying, laying down, face down, with your face to the ground in submission. It means you're completely overcome. You're lacking vitality. You're lacking the will to rise up. Nah, I'm not going to be dismayed. Amen. 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 That, that means you have totally given up and, and you have totally submitted yourself to the enemy. Yes, sir. And the Bible says don't do it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This will never be your case from today. Don't give up. They that wait on the Lord. You hear that? They that wait on the Lord. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? Well, don't give up. Wait on the Lord. Wait for what? For him to renew your strength. Amen. I see you waiting. Because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Don't, don't get tired in your mind. Like I said, if you're tired in your body, rest. But mentally, you must think, I'm waiting on the Lord. So everything is fine. Amen. Everything is okay. I'm waiting on the Lord. Amen. I'm going to rest my body. Well, I'm tired. The Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. God is always awake. So there's no sense in you being awake when you should be asleep. Amen. 
Amen. You know, one translation, um, the way it renders and Satan hindered us, it says, he set up a roadblock preventing further progress. Wow. 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 You know, that gives us a clue as to why Satan hinders us because we're making progress. Yes. That's why he sets up that roadblock to prevent further progress. Yes. I see you making progress. That means we're progressing towards something. And Satan doesn't want us to arrive at it. Yes. What is it? What is it? What is it we're progressing towards? When we're making progress, we're progressing towards our God-given destinies. If you're having a great fight, that's good news. Because that means you have a great destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God. If the enemy is trying to keep you from Jesus, it's because Jesus has a great life for you. So don't let anything stop you from coming to Jesus. Uh, what about if I already have Jesus? Well, the enemy has, has maybe gotten you to a place where you're tired you got to rise up and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. If the enemy hinders you or tries to hinder you from the word or from going to church or from praising God or from giving um, or faithfulness in serving, you got to rise up in faith. Mm -hmm. I said, you have to rise up in faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, and in God's strength. Mm -hmm. And restore yourself back to the road that leads to your glorious destiny. Yes. Amen. Remember, Jesus came to give you the abundant life. So, partner up with him and always, 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 always be going for life. Yes, sir. Don't let anyone dim your light. You're capable and you're worthy. Um, you're unstoppable. Yes, Praise God. Praise God. Keep pushing. Keep believing. Keep winning because the world needs need your light. Keep shining. Praise God. Amen. The world needs the light that you will provide. Yes. Well, I'm out of time. So thanks for watching, everyone. If this message resonates with you, hit the like button and subscribe for more inspirational content. And leave a comment uh, sharing your own story of overcoming, especially overcoming negativity. Um, until next time, keep winning. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.